Hi guys, welcome to Joe Joe Fitness with me, Joe, and to today's core basics class. We're going to be working on the abs and on the lower back, so everything associated with the core. If you do enjoy it, I always ask, could you please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and of course hit that bell to let me know you've been stopping by and watching. Have a fantastic class, guys. I hope you really enjoy it. If you want to get in touch, in a more personal way, all of the social media accounts are listed in the information boxes below. Are you ready? Let's go. Just beginning, put your hands on your hips and just roll around. So we're just thinking to waken up the spine as well. You see, when we work the core, very much lumbar spine is involved and it's really important that we warm that up. Of course, a lot of stuff to do with core crosses the hip. So we're warming up into the hips as well. So we're getting some nice hip stuff in there. So just kind of going through things nice and steady and slowly, as I say, core basics this morning. So I'm gonna try and not do anything too fancy. And then round the other way, not that others, I've only got anything really fancy. I am of uh, old school back in the day with heroes like the Green Goddess and Jane Fonda. And they were the people that we watched. <laughs> in their wonderful shiny lycra cat suits. Do you remember cat suits? Oh yes. All right. Just pausing here now, just taking a little wrap. So soften your knees and just shoulders moving. And um, oh, I've a lot of ohms today. Just tapping into the back of the body is good, stimulating kidneys and liver. A little shamanic tap on the back and just twisting through. This is nice because it creates a nice cool draft. It's really quite muggy still, despite the rain that's coming. And um, I will give you the option today if you've got them. Um, you can use weights for this. I'm always a little bit um, kind of compromised when it comes to using weights for abdominal work, just because you don't want to ever grow thickness at the waist. You don't want to make those muscles really strong and thick. Four more, because then it will make our waist thicker. So we always want a nice lean, slim, trim waist, but um, letting that go. Um, you can use weight, you're just reaching just go to the right. So go to the right and then rectify. Don't go to the left as well. So we're not kind of swinging up and over on that spine. And of course you can do this with bands. So bands under the feet and um, band in each hand and just pull against the band. So working slightly differently. So light weights, lots of reps. So we're still working in that cardio realm rather than real resistance, as I say, where we would be looking to build, we are looking to build muscle strength and tone, but we don't want to build great big muscles. Nice. Just keep this going for four more, please. And then very easily changing sides. So as I say, you can do this without the weight. You just reach and rectify, reach and rectify. So great as well for mobilizing the spine. Working into the sideways, into the obliques. sorts of lying down crunches in a moment but I just thought we'd start standing up kind of get energized for four for three for two for one lovely and then you can do those circles round now two weights so these are only two kilos that feels too heavy for me but you don't have to again you don't have to use the weights you're just rolling around Soft knees is important so you're not compromising your back. So don't come off rigid straight legs. That will 
make your back ache. So you can do one weight and it's around the world. Lovely. And if you want to go even deeper, you can come into a squat and just work around here. Good. and then kind of re-energize and come back to some standing once I get towards the end if I can time it properly and then just pop that weight down so other side hands on hips just lifting that knee so we're not lifting in front we are lifting to the side hip is open knee lifts in front do work um, into the abs so if you have been doing that it's perfectly fine just slightly different area of the abdominals and um, we will be doing those ones again as I say later on if I don't run out of time. Sometimes when I do these ad hoc unplanned classes, as I do something, it spurs a new memory. Oh, let's do that, let's do that. And it kind of snowballs. And then I uh, go off on a real big tangent. Four, three, two, one. Good. Just thinking about the back sliding down. And and lifting up, and when you lift up, think about stacking your spine and drawing your navel in. Rolling down, and rolling up. So you're just really rolling down, 
stretching out the glutes and then fire the glutes, fire the lower back and then stacking the spine up, shoulders up, chin up and then down. Shall we not? <laughs> As I say, take a child's pose, take a break, or just keep doing just the first half, the spinal flexion, roll down, roll up. You don't have to do the walk out if you don't want to. And of course, that is a dose for every exercise. If there's any exercise you just think that's just not a bit of me, dump it. Carry on with something we've already done or pause and wait for something we're about to do. I make this one now our last one. So come all the way out to plank, but don't come up. Pause and hold in your plank. Count 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then release to the floor. Let's just do an alternating leg lift. Straight leg out the back, lift and raise, alternate. Notice my head is on my hands. I'm not sitting with my neck crunched forward. So try, it is a bit hot to breathe down there, but try and keep that spine in the neck nice and safe. And then take a child's pose, just come on back, take a quick stretch, and we're going to turn over, coming onto your backs, okay? So, knees bent, feet upon the floor, just take your hands up as if you're holding a box above your chest, and have your thumbs released, so you're just going to drop the arms overhead, touching your thumbs down behind you, you'll feel your lats will flare, your lower back will lift a little bit, but you'll get a nice stretch through the front of your abs. And then keeping your spine down, just bring the arms back up to where they came from. Just do that a couple of times. Arms extend, feel all of those areas of your body engaging, and then release. Breathing in, and breathing out. 
and breathing in and breathing out. So if you were kind of doing a Pilates class now, I would tell you to engage your core, which is always a good thing because it protects your back. So even though we're not doing a true Pilates type class, we still want to engage in those principles of safety. So navel down towards spine, lift the pelvic floor, hold and brace the abdominals. And then start to lift the body as you come up. So you're curling up, peeling the spine off the floor. So you're bringing your hands up. Can you see you're rolling up? And then roll your spine down, drop your arms long. Start to bring the arms, start to curl up, raise. Navel to spine, and then down and away. Inhale, exhale, curl and lift, and down. And just keep this going. Now I'm regretting having my super green smoothie this morning. But I wake up so hungry, so I'll always take it. Now I'm feeling like I'm getting it for a second time. Not great. Never mind. I've only been doing this for about 30 years. I'm still yet to learn. <laughs> Actually, longer than 30 years, but don't tell anyone. Okay, last two like this. And then just pop your body down, relax those arms, just let them go. Bring your hands onto your hips and have your elbows on the floor so you're looking to keep everything nice and flat. I want you to push your foot out along the floor. Notice how I've got no air between my foot and the mat. I am actually pushing against the mat, change leg, push out. So you should hear a nice swishing sound as well as feeling the resistance. If you just kind of pick your foot up and put it out and bring it back, you're not really doing anything except, you know, keeping the knee and the, the hip healthy, but you're not really working into the core. So you need that resistance of the push and the pull. And you determine how strong that is because you determine how much you push on the floor. If you've got socks on, you're going to get a little bit extra slip. If you've got... Um, carpet and you're not working on a mat then you've got a little bit of extra slip so there's ways to manipulate it to make it accessible but try and get a little bit of friction a little bit of resistance and that will work into those muscles and then once you've got those legs happening we're going to bring the arms in just like we did exactly the same bring them up thumbs back and as you take the leg away take the arms away and then as you bring the leg back in bring the arms back in so this is your starting position either spine up or spine down it's up to you and then long so your toes and your fingers are the furthest away from them that they can be and then back into start position push and pull and again breathe in long expand the lungs <sighs> breathe out come up straight good in and out, up and down, out and in. Lots of duality, the B. Push and pull, good. If you find that your neck starts to get a bit achy, just first of all, before you start supporting it, check that you've got the correct posture. So if you're jutting your chin forward like this, you will have a lot of tension, particularly in traps. So just release off your jaw, release off your head. Just try and tuck your chin in as if you're holding a tennis ball under your chin. So you're going to um, just release that off and just try and pull your head back a little bit so you're not pushing forwards. And then just look, as I say, to release off the tension. So wiggle your jaw. So for me, it's really easy because I'm talking non-stop. So I can't hold tension there because I have to be able to move my jaw, my mandible. So just maybe pretend you're chewing gum or take a fake yawn every now and then just to release off through there. Okay, we're going to do this four more times each side. Four, but then if that doesn't immediately help, you can bring your hands underneath the neck and hold the neck. I've lost count now. Let's do two more. And one more each side, please. Lovely. And then I do encourage you just to take a little bit of a release. Just rock out. 
rock the head from side to side, especially if you have been feeling that um, neck pain. And then we're gonna come over onto our side. So make sure you've got enough distance. And you can see you might want to use a weight for this. I'm thinking no, but I'll show you the exercise and then you can decide. I really like you to lie down, okay? So doing this, I find really kind of makes me a bit nauseous because I just know how much pressure you're putting on the neck when you press like this. And the neck just doesn't need that kind of intensity. Take the top arm overhead, extend the top leg away. Use your bottom leg in kind of a triangle to make you a nice space. And just check if you've rolled back like this, if you're rolling back onto the glutes, pull yourself right up and onto that hip bone so that your bum is not touching the floor. And then you're just gonna reach the leg and the arm towards each other. Now, if the straight leg is too much, bend the knee and you can bring knee and elbow. All right? So it's up to you. You know how you feel. If your hips are nice and mobile, and you feel that you've got enough energy to kick a full straight leg, then do that. If you're feeling a little bit tight in the hips, a little bit challenged, then you're gonna take knee to elbow. Okay, so options for all. Eight to go, please. And when you've done your eight, feel free to give that leg a little bit of a squeeze and then just turn yourself over and we're gonna just do a little dorsal raise. So I'm gonna start hands on the floor. Remember, tuck that chin in, hold that tennis ball, and just lift and release. So it's really nice and steady, nice and slow. Breathe out as you lift away, breathe in as you come down. And just check in the glutes. So try and relax the glutes off, let the lower back Stretch and release, contract and stretch, good. You want to take a quick stretch here, feels nice just to reach out and lengthen as we're going to kind of spin round to our side two. So set yourselves up. So laying long, reaching away. So remember knee and elbow or arm and leg. doing the knee and arm elbow option you're still rotating out through that hip so again try not to bring it up the front looking to work onto the side good job Please. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely. Come back over onto your tummy. I'm just going to shift my position around because I just want to show you what we're going to do. Um, but you can just roll straight over as long as you can see. So actually that doesn't work. I'm going to go diagonally. So I want you to come onto hands and knees if your knees feel okay. You're going to walk yourself out into a three quarter plank. Drop your hips down and then you're going to do shoulder taps. One hand to the opposite shoulder. If you find that really challenging, you're going to have to stick your bottom out and do it from here. And just work up to the full one. Excuse me. Um, and if you can do the, the three-quarter one easily and you want to have a go at doing it off the toes, then you can do that as well. So you've got box, three-quarter or full. It really is um, your choice, of course. I'm just going to come this way because of uh, knees.
Pull the navel down and in towards your spine. Lift your pelvic floor. Remember to breathe. Remember to smile. Remember to go nice and slow and steady. And supporting the neck if the neck is hurting. Eight to go, please. Seven left. Six more. Final five. Only four. Triple left. Last two. And the final one. Well done. Come up onto the elbows, in and out. change sides. So again, you're not doing the, the arms. You can do just the knee. <sighs> Remember to hang on if you need to, if you're a bit wobbly. Eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Take the legs wide. And we're gonna just reach out, come down sort of halfway, and we're gonna reach over towards one side. One side. So you don't have to touch your foot. You can be touching your knee. But just look to kind of move from the shoulder. So you're getting a nice twist going on. Now, take the feet back together, remember which side you just did, and we're going to just take it, straight leg, across the body, and a straight arm, like a kick. all the work I've been avoiding because we've had such lovely weather. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the legs in, kick and release. Really reaching over. 
Nice. Take the arms around behind you, just holding the hand. Just open across the chest, lift up and stretch. So you're stretching through the tummy as well. And then just conversely, let's just bring that in and roll out here. So you've got roll back. And then just let that go. Step one foot in front of the other. You can just kind of reach down, taking a bit of a glute stretch. And then changing it over, please. Reach down. Ooh, I'm on the corner. A little bit of even there. I've got one mat over the other, and even though it's only a mat's, a mat's width, it may be unstable. All right, come on up. Take a deep breath in, please. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. And breathe in. And breathe out. My absolute pleasure is always to bring this class for you. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.